Hello, this is Diane with Diane's Blue Hearts and Butterflies.com. And I have seen this card a few times on Pinterest and YouTube. And I really wanted to make this. Um, it's a pop out card so that it folds flat so that you can mail it. And then when you open it, there's a mechanism that makes this vase pop out so that the flowers kind of um, stand out. And I wanted to share with you how to do this. I was inspired by Jane Dooley that I saw it from, and she stated that she had gotten it from Tracy Allen, I think was the, the person that she attributed it to. Um, I did use some of the designer series paper that was on the celebration January and February 2021 that is already uh, retired, but I wanted to be able to um, share that with this um, technique because I like the color scheme of it. So let me put those aside. I did use some of the Daisy Lane but um, a lot of the items did come from a retired set, which was Daisy Delight, that was previous to this. I used the large um, flower here. I used the um, leaf and the background, and the uh, I just used the background on the center, and then the smaller um, Daisy and the background on this. I did use this daisy for the smaller daisy on this as well as this fern piece and so we'll see more of that. I did a lot of the cutouts from the Poppy Moments dies that are still in the catalog for the flowers in, or for the stems and stuff inside. So I cut um, this large leafy stem I cut uh, for each card. I cut, uh, where was it? I think it was three of these and two or three of the smaller stemmed ones. And then I cut this detailed leaf to go in here. And I did about, I think there was three of those. And, um, I'll go over the rest of the stuff that we need to do this card. So let me move that off to the side. So get out our main packet of stuff here. There's a lot, lot of pieces. So the base is just a regular base. It's eight and a half by five and a half and you uh, score that at four and a quarter and make sure that you crease that edge with your bone folder. Then there are two um, just leftover strips of basic white and that is what I did st um, stamp the daisies on. I stamped two daisies for each flower. And so I wanted to have two of the large one and two of the smaller ones. And I wanted the fl flirty flamingo in the center to kind of pull that color out of the designer series paper. Um, we'll see here. And the card that, that uh, June, Jane, I think Jane had shared, um, she had three of these designer series layers across the um, front of the card going down. Um, I I didn't really like how busy it was, so I just uh, either used one of those or two of those to kind of create that little bit of background. So these were stamped in Flirty Flamingo ink as well. And then the layer for this de designer series paper is um, 
three and seven eighths by one and five eighths. And this I used crushed curry, again, pulling from the color in the designer series paper. And then the designer series paper is three and five eighths by one and three eighths. If you're not getting the measurements, please just check on my blog. I will have those measurements over there. And again, like I said, I cut three of them, uh, but you don't have to. You can do uh, less than that. But these will fit so that it fits three, um, three of these down the front of the card like this. And you would adhere those, of course, together. I just wanted to show you what they had done. So that's that idea. I also have for the inside a piece of crushed curry cardstock. This one is um, three and seven eighths by five and three eighths. And this basic white is three and three quarters by five and a quarter. And this piece uh, I will be stamping on, so I will share that. Then there is a label on the front, and I just cut a um, two and a half by two and a half square piece of cardstock to be able to cut the label out and um, also make a uh, an outer layer. And I'll show more about that in a little bit. Um, this okay these pieces are what create the stems and I did six of them but these create the stems that hold the flowers inside the vase these are um, one half by four and then you're going to take and fold those burnish the this and then I used liquid glue inside and just let them um, glue together and you'll need six of those and these again will be cutting later to make them fit um, for the flowers and I also like I said stamped some of these small flowers small da daisies and I did three of those in just the black and these I'll be using in that vase. Okay, so here are the, the other pieces. I did the, the new ones that I cut. I cut mint macaron for the detailed leaf. And then I had uh, one, two, three of the larger and two of the smaller. And these I used the Bermuda Bay because that's the... Um, one of the colors that I could pull out of the these two colors I pulled out of the designer series paper so let me get these okay this is the mechanism pieces and the vase piece that we're going to need to put together and this is a designer series paper and if you're using one that has a directional, you'll need to make sure that you cut it in the right direction so that the uh, two and a half or two and a quarter inch side is here and the five inch is here. And you'll need to make sure that that direction faces. <coughs> Excuse me. These I did in crushed curry, which is a matching color. This one is three quarters of an inch by three and seven eighths and this one is half an inch by two inches and this one I called this one a pulley and this one a stabilizer and then this one is the vase and um, that way we could keep track of, of the pieces so let me bring in my um, trimmer so we're going to do some scoring. So on this piece, okay. so on this vase piece, 
It says score on the wrong side of the designer series paper in portrait, which means the little side across the top. And we're going to score that at three quarters of an inch. And then we're going to score. Again, remember to score lightly or else you can cut through the designer series paper. And then you'll move this over to one and a half. And score. Then we're going to take this face and we're going to score it at one inch from each end. Now the trimmer from Stampin' Up, it does have an inch and a half on this side that you could measure out so that those people that are right-handed can hold the paper on this side and do that. So I'm going to go one inch from each end. I'll just flip that around and go to one inch again. Okay, I'm going to set this aside. Now, the stabilizer piece, we are not going to be doing any scoring on that. But the pulley, we need that to be in landscape, which is the long side at the top. And we're going to score it at three-eighths of an inch, which is... A lot of people keep asking me. So you have your one, your single digit, you have your half in the middle. Half of that is a quarter and half of that is an eighth. And then the littlest mark in here is a sixteenth. So there's an eighth, one eighth, two eighth, and three eighths. So I need to, I'm going to do it from this other side. So there's one eighth, two eighth, three eighths. It is that line between the quarter and the half, and I'm going to score that. And this piece is gonna fold over and be glued to the inside right side to be able to, to pull that. So let me, I'll put that together real quick. And so here we need to go ahead and you can kind of see on the score lines, we're going to cut out so that we have two pieces or two corners. Now that will matter when you go to put that together. If it is, I'm gonna pull these from this from this next kit because I wanted to be able to do everything with you guys. Where's that little stabilizer piece? There it is. So put this over just off to the side. So if you have a directional piece, you want to make sure it's up and down. The Inside tab, you will cut off on the right-hand side, and the two outer tabs, you'll take off on the left side. So if your paper is directional, this is the way it is. Gonna need to uh, be up and down and have these on these sides. So I'm gonna go ahead and right now clip the center one and I'm going to, again, like I did on a, another card, a slimline card, I'm going to cut on the side away from the tab we're cutting and cut just on that side of the score line. So it'll be the side away from the one we're cutting on. We're going to cut on that side. 
That way they don't um, catch on it on the pulley piece coming through. And so actually this I'm going to fold back. And this one I'm going to cut off right there at the score line. So these are these two pieces. And then over here we're going to leave the center one and cut out the two outside. tabs. So I'm going to go, I'm trying to find my score line here. It's a little hard to see with the yellow or the curry rather. Cut this one again. Just a, on the side away from the tab that we're cutting off. Oh, trying to grab the wrong thing. Cut that part. And cut this one. Take those off. So now we have a piece that looks like this. And then I'm going to show with this one. I'm sorry, this is taking so long. This one does have a lot of little pieces and it did take the longest in our class. But that was um, um, one of the cards that our host wanted to make was this um, pop-out card because she really likes the more movable cards, a little more um, effort. So on the front of the card base, I did stamp the fern from the, um, I cannot remember, Daisy Lane. And I just stamped that in evergreen across the front. And so I know where my front is. So this is the right inside. You're going to have this with that white one that we're going to stamp here in just a minute. But I'm just going to show you. This one you want to line up with the border towards this side. And the reason is because you're going to have this piece you're going to glue it so that it fits and folds to that side of the card so when you're opening the card it actually pulls this piece now this has to go this way with this folded under on this side it's also going to need to adhere to the inside of this one. So this one's gonna, the one tab in the center is gonna need to fold under and you need to have this on this side of it. Don't do it on this side because then it gets caught with this piece being on the inside when you're using the stabilizer. And I'll show that in a minute. So I'm gonna go ahead and adhere, I used tearing tape because this is going to move a lot and I wanted to make sure that uh, it would be strong enough. So making sure this one is going to fold in and this one folds down. So I'm making sure that this is folded down and this goes on this side and it goes up to that score line there and just kind of line it up and then you'll glue that down. Now this is going to fold back this way but for now I'm going to open it up just so that I can peel this backing off of the pulley piece 
I don't want to stick that down yet. I want to make sure that this is kind of a little above the bottom on the left hand side so that when it's closed it's not hanging out the bottom. So I'm opening this up. This little edge of the tab is going to line up on the right side of the score line. So once I get this kind of where I want it, I want to line that up on that side of the score line and then I'll glue that part down right there. Now, to keep this from wobbling all over, that is what this little stabilizer piece is for. And you're going to want to put it a little bit back. I'll try to show. To give it a little bit of room to be able to pull, you're going to want to, to glue this, and that's why I only put tape on the top and bottom. I want to be able to glue this kind of in here so that it holds this straight when it's being pulled. And you just want to give it enough room that it can um, close. And so I take these two tear and tape backings off. And I want to make sure that these glued areas are not going to be gluing down this part of the pulley. And we want it to be in just a bit so that it can. So it's kind of like about where that that piece on the back side ends is about where you want to put that. And then we want it to be kind of inside these lines. So oh, it's held up a little bit. You want to kind of lay this over just to make sure that it's not going to stick out. And then you'll stick that down there. Now the last part to make this work as this closes, it's going to push this, this left side back in. And we don't want these tabs to interfere with this um, thing. So if you see that it's really kind of tight, you may want to cut a little bit more off of that one edge, which I'm going to do right here, because I really don't want this to catch on that pulley. I had one do it and it made it very difficult for me to undo it to get it on there. Now these two pieces are going to fold back in and it's a little bit tricky because you don't want to glue them down until you get the card closed. So I kind of went over it with my bone folder on those folded edges and then I took the I think I'm doing better with my fingernails take those backings off and yes this one takes a little bit more but it will such a good effect and I know that the people will appreciate the effort you put into it and especially if you like doing fun movement cards it's really a nice way of spending your creativity and your time to do that. So I'm going to put it back over here, but I'm going to kind of hold it up. And then I'm going to, you see how it's kind of up? And then when it goes in, push that so that it closes on this end and then just push down 
and that makes the mechanism so that it comes in and out. So that is how that part is done. So on the inside of the card, and some of these are <coughs> photopolymer stamps. So I want to show you how I stamped on the inside to create the um, mast area. So I have wanted the big flower so I stamped that in the Memento Tuxedo Black I want to make sure you get ink all on that and then I'm gonna do that kind of down in the lower corner and then you're gonna do that again and you're going to offset, offset it a little bit. You'll want to make sure that you kind of line up that center circle and then twist it so that it kind of goes in between those other petals. And then you'll stamp that and you get that. Now I'm going to go ahead and use Flirty Flamingo and I'm going to stamp the center of this circle and there's that. Oh, the other two, so I use the small daisy in the background and then the leaf in the background on the, uh, this is from the Daisy Delight, I believe it's called, the one that's retired. Well, I created a mask by doing exactly what I just did there, and then I just tried to find how to best kind of line it up to cover most of these areas. The mask, you want to make sure that you're using a, um, I don't know, it's blue glue. It's a, a type of glue that uh, sometimes, the when Stampin' Up! sold it, it was two-way glue pen, and I'm not sure what the, it's called, the other ones at other crafts areas. But when you, Put the ink on the back side of the image and you let it set it will become more like a um, post-it note type paper so that it's easy to take off and if you put it directly on right now then it it makes it more permanent like the Tombow glue so I am going to use I'm gonna use the black first so I'm going to stamp some leaves around here and I'm going to go, go up in. I've got this masked and the thing about the masking is that when you pull the mask off it doesn't stamp that image where the mask was. So put Another one, kind of right here. Oh, and of course, this is what we do when we rock that stamp. But I'm gonna use something else to try to cover that up. It's kind of how we do it when we're crafting and stamping. Best thing is not to get it on there, but sometimes we can't help it. And there's the third one. 
Now I'm going to do this little daisy. I think I'm going to put this one right in here. And then I'll add another one just kind of over here. And I want to add some color to those. So I'm going to use the Flirty Flamingo with the background for that little flower. And then I just try to fit that, line it up and kind of fit where it goes. The stamp over it. I'm sorry if my head got in the way. And I'm doing the same thing over here. Just trying to get it lined up. And stamp down. This one's probably off a little bit, but that's okay. And then the background one for the leaves, I'm going to use the Bermuda Bay. This one's kind of getting several techniques on it, which is another reason that it kind of takes a little longer. But one of our members in our class had been asking me to show again how to do the masking technique because she tends to forget on how to get it done. So I was trying to help her as well as create a really neat card. So I'm getting the background just over those leaves. Goes right in here. And again, it doesn't matter that it's getting on the mask, it's masking behind it so that that stamp doesn't go there. So when I go to take up my mask, This take your pick tool is really neat. It's got several different heads that you can put on it. And so when I take this up, the flower is there. So this one is the spatula end and you can take it out and then there's a piercing tool and it's real easy to use these. There's a some little notches and you line those up with the the barrel. And then you just t turn it one way to lock and one way to unlock. And it's pictured right here, so it makes it easy to use. It also has this putty end, so if you're using your sequins or some of your other jewels, you can grab them with this or other small pieces to be able to use them. So I'm going to do a message and something on that to be able to uh, cover that. But this is just what I'm... Uh, just wanted to show you how to do these. So I'm going to pull out some more pieces from this that I have already done, pre-done to make this go a little bit faster. And so on here I have already mounted these things. I've already stamped the the evergreen limb and I've already got this part done so let me get that these are the other pieces that I'm just gonna put back in here because I have some already set up and ready in another kit and I'll get those out in a moment so um there's one more thing I wanted to stamp the message in black and show a tip about the, um, yes, I am having a hard time with my brain working today, the punch, and I should have had my 
the stamp appears mad out of this because it is photopolymer. So I'm gonna just hope that it came out all right. There we go. So there's that. Now I have this label me fancy punch. You could use many other types of punches. And then, where's my little, oh, I don't know where it went. Well, I'll just use this thing then, because it is easier if you have like a post-it note or something that you can kind of hold this piece, because instead of having it to stamp on a big piece and waste a bunch of, of paper, I just use a post-it note and I put it in here. And so you can see where that fits and be able to put that in the middle. that lined up in the middle and be straight and then I'm just going to punch that out this other piece comes out and we can throw that away so that is one thing I wanted to show the next thing is the other cardstock piece that you punch the same label this one is flirty flamingo and I used uh, evening evergreen as our base this one it doesn't really matter so I'm just gonna put that in there and punch another label and put that away now I'm going to take this and I want it to be able to be seen around the top and bottom, but you can see that they're the exact same size, so it wouldn't stick out. You could do it with just offsetting it, you know, to one side or something, but I wanted to show this effect. You just cut it in half, and then I'm going to line up and put these pieces together like that. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of adhesive. Along the bottom and along the top. So I'm gonna hold the top and along the bottom, I'm gonna kind of line this up so that it's making a little bit of a, a border. You can make as big or little as you want. And it just shows a little bit on the outside. And then on this one, you do the same thing. Kind of get that little border where you want it. And glue that there. So this can be popped up on a card. So you could, if you wanted all three pieces, you could do this. And then you could pop up your... I'm going to do these this way. And then you could pop up the um, label here. And then there are some flowers to add to the front. Um, the other thing that I wanted to show is if you're doing the daisies just on a strip, it can be sometimes hard to stamp them so that they go through the punch well so and this is the medium daisy punch and the large daisy punch you just take and see if you can fit it in so that you can see through and punch out this daisy with a little bit of white border around it and then when you go to the next one it may not line up quite right. This one might, but I don't know. 
But if it if it has any issues, what you're going to do is just take and kind of use your scissors to kind of cut off around the edges so that you can get that in there. And it's always best to punch where you can see through so that you know where you're lining that up. And makes for a really pretty. And like I said, you're going to need two of these. What I did before I put them together is I kind of broke the uh, fibers of the paper a little bit by using my bone folder and my thumb to kind of make these fold up or, or curl up is I guess a better way to say that. And once you've got that done, then you can just use a glue dot and you're going to put them together. And when you do, again, like I did with the stamping, you're gonna to wanna to offset it so that the leaves go in between. And that's how to get more of a 3D, 3D look. So that's what I, another tip I wanted to share when using that. So let me get those out of the way. And so I'm gonna start on the inside first. Like I said, you've got this coming over here. So when you put this together and put it in here, you're going to want to make sure that you do not stamp on top or glue on top of this mechanism because it needs to be able to go in and and open up inside so that it'll lay flat. So let me put these two together. This is where I did add a, a sentiment here and I had rocked it here a little bit. So I used one of those brass butterflies. Um, that I mentioned in another video. They are in the January to June 2022 catalog that Stampin' Up! has. And if you need any of these supplies or want some of these products, you can always shop through my store or choose me as a, a demonstrator. You may also shop through my blog. I have a, a link there to take you directly over there to that and then you'll be shopping with me so I'm going to glue this onto the curry piece with a small border and then I'm going to take and glue this I just want to make sure that my card doesn't come apart. So a lot of times when it's hot outside or cold outside, the, the glue reacts with it. So again, like I said, if anything, you want to shove that up under there a little bit. And you want to have that little bit of border around all of these sides. But you want to leave most of this undone. So that when you close it, that folds together. And so let me get out some of these other pieces that I have done. So See this one I had done two kind of overlap together. So just to save time, I'm gonna go ahead and put that over there. And this one go over there. trying to get stuff out of my way here. So to go ahead and do the um, vase here, and I kept one of one of these flowers 
separate. And then I have three of these little daisies, two of the medium daisies, one of the large daisies, and those are on those green stems. <coughs> now, this is where you can either use the Tombow glue or glue dots or however you want to do it. I think I used glue dots for these part, this part. And so I wanted to know where it's going to go, where I want to stagger these things. And you're going to glue them on the inside of this vase because they're going to fold down and go down. But the majority of them you're going to want to do this way. So I think I'm going to need two glue dots, one at the bottom, because it didn't stick out. Um, some of the others that we may move down, we may want to cut off some of the bottom of that. So on this, and so I'm going to, I want to make sure that it's not sticking out of the top of that. And so you could put it off to the side or however you want to do it. And I'm going to glue that in. And these are um, a little bit smaller so they could kind of stick out a little bit. So again, I think I'll use two glue dots for that. And the rest of it is going to be a lot of just filling it in and then decorating the front. And I don't want the video to take too long, so I just wanted to kind of give you um, an idea of what to do here. So I'm going to glue that there. Now, some of these... Yeah, some of these leaves and stuff, you may want to cut down a little bit, like this one I cut down, just so that I could use, oh, if I could just grab it, I could use those kind of along here with the Tombow glue so that it would have some, because I need to use that. A small one and a large one. There's the other little one. Small one, a large one, and one of these detailed leaves with this white one on the outside. But here you may want to go ahead and put some greenery on here so that it kind of stands out. So you could cut that apart. You may want to have some of these glued down in the back by the, uh, you could actually glue it to the card base. Um, and then you just kind of fill in with some of your other flowers. And this is what I was talking about. If you put something down here and it's gonna stick out, maybe you can't see it yet. So if it's gonna stick out, you're gonna want to kind of know about how to where to cut that down and you'll just use your scissors or snips and cut that off so that it'll fit where you want it to and you may want to you know, cuz there's 3 of these so you can make it however you want it and you can use any designer series paper you can use any flowers uh, that you have. You can use any of your die cuts that you have and then you eventually end up with your card that looks like something like this. And then when you pop that open you get all of those flowers and things popping out. So that is the end all result. I just wanted to share that with you and um, I hope that you enjoyed the video, that you will click like and maybe subscribe to my channel, share it with others that like paper crafting, uh, especially the avid crafters that like to do a lot of the moving parts and mechanisms. 
and that um, if you'd like to see more videos of my uh, that I post on here that you will go ahead and uh, hit that bell icon to be notified when I do upload a video um, also I hope that you would check out my blog it's www.diannesblueheartsandbutterflies.com and you can see other uh, projects and videos that I have done for the last couple of years COVID was a growing year for me I got to learn a lot about how to do some of these things and I'm still not proficient but I hope that you will uh, like what I do and if you're ever interested in signing up as a demonstrator you can also join through my website um, at uh, it's Diane's die cut divas dot stampin up dot net and that will take you to my actual stampin up web page and um, you could click to join there and you get usually get at least some freebies I know that you get $125 worth of merchandise um, for only $99 you don't have to continue as a demonstrator you could just take advantage of the um, special price also during the year um, usually during celebration which we have one January and February and another one in uh, August and September and during that time you can earn other things with the uh, with signing up as a demonstrator so I hope that you will continue to enjoy what I enjoy and um, visit my blog to see more especially the dimensions for all of these projects that I do and I see um, hope that you will keep coming back thank you